Welcome back to Shop Farmer Garage. Today we are working on this 2015 Kia Sorento. It has a engine that needs to be replaced under the warranty extension. It has a 2.4 liter and the engine just it's gone out. So we've already cut through all the hoops and jumped through all the red tape to get this covered under the warranty extension. We got the parts in, and so let's just start tearing this thing apart, and I'll show you how I do it compared to the way that other technicians do it. It's not necessarily better, it's just, for me, it's just less hassle. So, let's go. This is a 2.4 liter, non-turbocharged, gasoline direct injection engine, and it has a rod knock really bad. So uh, we are going to replace this. Uh, and so the procedure that I'm gonna do, uh, so this is how it goes, and I, I may be a little bit wrong about this, I'm not exactly the whole sure about the entire story of what happened and why, but, uh, it's my understanding that um, Kia was paying technicians pretty well to replace these engines and uh, the procedure was to drop the subframe assembly and drop the entire engine and transmission out of the bottom and then pull the engine off of the transmission, replace everything, put it back, put it back in, put the subframe back on. And uh, what technicians were starting to do is they're starting to pull this entire front um, assembly off the bumper, the core support, the radiator pack, everything, and uh, pull the engines out of the top. Now, at that point, me personally and some technicians in the shop, we had already started pulling these engines out of the top, you know, taking the hoods off, even on uh, some of them on the 2.4 liter, um, the Optima. Uh, you don't even need to pull the hood off, you don't need to pull all this stuff off, you can get it out, you know, just right here but it's a big hassle to do that too but uh technicians were saying they can get the engine out a lot quicker and they can do more of them quicker by just pulling the front bumper and um to, it's not just kia technician kia and hyundai technicians and they went on to the forums and stuff and you know bragging hey i could do it better than i can do it faster than you you know whatever you know well uh kia hyundai got wind of that and they started looking into it and they're like, yeah, you can. You can take the bumper off and you can pull the engine out and it's quicker. So you know what? We're not gonna pay you as much time to replace the engine as we were, you know, or something like that. So the, the labor to replace these engines went down a little bit. But for me, pulling this, in, this, this bumper off, especially on these older vehicles, there are so many clips and things in here that can break and come apart. Ooh, look at that guy. Anyway, there's so many th things that can come apart and, um, and not, it won't go back together right. And some people have uh, front bumpers that have been hit, they've hit uh, curbs, whatever. And um, once you take it off, it just doesn't go back together right. And the core support and everything too, it's a big hassle. Uh, so for me, it's easier just to drop the subframe, pull the engine and transmission out, then you can work on it right there with the engine and the transmission out. And that's the way I do it. And I continue to do it like that. Um, I don't care what anybody else says. I've actually timed myself for dropping an engine out and replacing it that way compared to another technician pulling uh, the front bumper off. And you know what? It's about the same amount of time. So. That's the way I'm gonna do it. That's the way I've uh, been doing it, so that's the way I'm gonna con continue to do it. And um, it's even uh, on the 2.4 liter Optimas. I had been just pulling them out of the top, but there's so much hassle trying to get this transmission disconnected from the engine in the back there. And uh, I've even seen a technician on a Sorento like this bust the transmission trying to get the engine out and that's with the front bumper off but you know that's a whole nother story but for me less hassle 
is just better. Even if it takes a little bit longer, I'd rather have less hassle, you know. So that's the way we're gonna do it. I'm going to start uh, stripping everything up here that I need to, getting the wiring harness disconnected. And if the harness can come with the engine, that's what I'm gonna do. If not, I'll have to disconnect everything from the harness, throw it all over. We'll get underneath it, we'll pick the thing up and um, start taking the suspension apart. Then we gotta get the steering apart and then drop the uh, subframe. And then it's just really easy to drop the entire thing. You know, of course we need to drain all the fluids and stuff like that. So let's just get started on that. got this harness and all this stuff out of the way I need to get this shifter the shifter cable you get that off get these two bolts out I don't bother with these right here anymore because they are just too much of a hassle I get these two bolts out I move that shifter cable out of the way I got to get this harness off these two bolts right here and disconnect that right there and this cable coming up right here and get that moved over and then that all that is disconnected um, get this vacuum hose off gotta get the heater hoses off so I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these heater hoses off from down here I'll leave them with the vehicle and of course we need to get the AC machine in here we need to uh, discharge the AC and uh, that's pretty much it um, I mean, we need to uh, drain fluids so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, go ahead and pull the thing up put it on the lift start draining the fluids because I got to get the fluid out before um, we can pull these hoses off uh, so while the thing is draining um, we can let it down and still do a little bit of work so uh, that's what I'm gonna do get this AC unit our AC system discharged so we can disconnect the AC lines uh, the compressor will be coming out with the engine um, so sometimes you can just disconnect the compressor and um, let it hang on the bottom, you know. So uh, this time I'm just gonna be disconnecting the, uh, the lines. It'll be easier um, than trying to disconnect the compressor inside the vehicle. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna hook this machine up and get it plugged in here. Get this cord unwrapped. And I just gotta watch out for this guy right there. You know, I mean, he's got just as much right to be there as, as I do. You know, it's just, it's better not get in my way, that's all. You know, 
or he may be smashed. You know, that's, he just better move, that's all. That's all I'm saying, you know? Just give me some room, you know? So uh, let me get this hooked up and I'll uh, start uh, evacuating the system, get the Freon out of it. This is where we're at right now. We got everything up above done. We need to start taking this, uh, this subframe down. So these cross bolts right here, I gotta get these off. Um, I've gotten the other ones off, so I gotta get the cross bolts out. Got to, let's see. Gotta get this uh, mount off right here. This exhaust needs to come apart. I need to disconnect that right there. Need to get the tie rod ends loose and knocked out. Need to get the end links off on the top, on both sides. And then uh, once, once we got that done, then we can bring it down and we're gonna disconnect the uh, steering intermediate shaft from the rack right here. And uh, then uh, we'll drop this whole subframe down and then the engine and transmission are ready to just drop it out. Um, I don't have to worry about any transmission cooler lines or anything going to transmission cooler because here's the transmission cooler right here. It's going to come down with the transmission. Uh, one thing I need to do is probably pull the starter out or probably right here. Uh, let's see if I can get this out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right there. Torque converter bolts. You need to get those out to get the torque converter bolts out before I drop the engine and transmission down because once the engine and transmission are down sitting on that table it's going to be hard to get those out so I'll get those out and probably get these lower transmission um, bell housing bolts out of course the axles are going to come out you know after we drop the subframe and those will just pop right out uh, and because this is a Kia it has a seal right here that is sealed to the inner uh, part of the uh, transmission, the uh, output um, part of the differential, and uh, we don't have to worry about uh, the uh, fluid leaking or anything. So we don't have to drain any fluid from the transmission at all. So uh, I'm gonna start uh, getting these stuff, this stuff taken apart and drop this thing down.
Okay, uh, now we need to take the uh, intermediate shaft off. Uh, you want to do all that stuff that we've just done uh, by pulling the lower control arms off and the um, tie rod ends off first. You definitely want to get those off first uh, before uh, pulling the intermediate shaft because when you pull the intermediate shaft off and then you start knocking on those tie rod ends to get them off, the, tie, the, the rack is going to move and then your intermediate shaft won't line up in the same spot and then your steering wheel is going to be off. Also another thing if you're pulling the intermediate shaft off, you want to have something like this, something that's going to hold this in place because once that shaft comes off, you don't want this to spin. If this spin, if this would were to spin 360 degrees, you wouldn't know it and you'd put it on and then after you start driving, you're going to break the clock spring and then you got airbag lights on and, and everything that works these buttons and stuff won't work anymore. So you definitely want to have this uh, stuck in place. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you could put some tape around here and then around the um, turn signal switch just to keep it from spinning you know that's all so down here is the intermediate shaft and it's already half marked on the shaft itself but I'm gonna put another mark on it just so that I know where it goes out of there and then I'm gonna start to pull it up a little bit and see how it's coming up right there so it's pretty much off I'm just gonna put a little mark where that yellow mark is on the bottom there I'm gonna put a, um, a sharpie across it and across the top right there to line it up and then I'll just pull it off and then that'll be done There she is, she's out. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move it over there, out of the way, out from underneath all of this. Um, so uh, one of the things that we're gonna be doing is replacing the lower, upper lower radiator hoses, which is a lot easier to do right now with the engine out, especially that one up there. Um, but. Uh, for now we need to move this over there and just start taking all this wiring harness and everything off the exhaust uh, catalytic converter manifold uh, intake manifold and um, separate the engine from the transmission and uh, we got the new engine sitting in a box over there and I will show you that once we get to it so let's get this thing moved and start tearing it apart
Okay, now, at this point right here, we need to get this fuel rail off. Uh, but we're to the point right now where we're gonna have to start transferring items to the new engine. So we need to get this new engine out of the box and here's the new one. And we can see we have the, um, the coolant manifold right here, but we don't have anything on the side right here. It's just a long block. So I need to pull this engine out and um, we'll just uh, set it here on the side or we'll just have it hanging from the, uh, from the engine hoist and we're gonna start uh, transferring uh, alternator, compressor, all this stuff over to the uh, new engine and then once we got the stuff transferred over then uh, we'll disconnect the engine from the transmission and we'll set that aside and we'll bring the new engine in and we'll put the rest of the stuff back on and it'll go back in so uh, let me get that engine out of there All right, there she is. And um, I got this thing spun around so I could just start taking all this stuff off and moving it over. Uh, one of the first things I need to get off, well, you see the starter and the alternator are hooked together. I don't plan on taking these connectors off. So the, the alternator and the starter are gonna come off and they're gonna sit over here on top of the uh, transmission. And I'll move this bracket and the uh, compressor over here. And then uh, what I need to do is get this uh, dipstick tube off and get this fuel rail out. This fuel rail needs to be transferred over here. This pipe is gonna be changed. So I got a new pipe. And of course this will be moved over. Um, of course, this is not gonna fit on there really good with this chain, the way this chain is, there's just not enough room. So once I get that transferred over here, then we'll put the high pressure fuel pump on and get this pipe hooked up. So uh, I'll just start doing that right now. So one of these, these hoses right here, they're gonna be replaced. If you look at the, uh, this is an engine oil cooler. If you look at where the oil adapter is and the cooler, how it sits on here, compared to this one, to this one the cooler is a lot bigger. So because of that, these hoses, they're not gonna reach properly. So I have a whole new set of hoses for those two. And I will be replacing those once we get to that point. But for now, just uh, tr start transferring this stuff over.
Okay. She's about ready to go in. Got all the entire harness, everything's hooked up. These do have brand new gaskets on them. Everything's got brand new gaskets, including the exhaust manifold, everything. I got the entire harness hooked up, got everything tightened up. Uh, there's only one more thing that I need to do. That's right here. Brand new dipstick going in. And now, let's get it in. Tell you what, spiders must be the most patient creatures on the face of this earth. I mean, no matter how many close calls with death, he's still there, you know. And I, I forgot about him. I, I accidentally swiped him off with my with my knee. Swiped him off with my knee. He was on the ground, and then he just like came right back up and sat right there, and he's been there all day. Anyway, I am about to pull vacuum on this AC system. Right here, I got the uh, hoses hooked up and uh, I'm gonna pull vacuum on the cooling system. I have everything hooked up. Everything is all done, all put together. I gotta put some oil in it and, oops. So get oil in there, pull the vacuum on the cooling system. I'm gonna get some cooling in it. And then uh, we are uh, really close. We're about to start this thing and see how it works. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, we got a vacuum on here. You can see how our hoses are all collapsed. And I got cooling in there, so I'm gonna turn this on. It's just sucking. They accidentally got some air in it right there, but it's just sucking all the cooling in from here. And that is slowly going down. You 
can see those hoses just uh, slowly coming back into shape. So it ain't a guarantee, but it's it's a lot better, a lot better than just putting coolant in there and just letting it go. So now the coolant's coming out. So there's no more vacuum. Take this hose off. Pull this out of here. Put this up in here. Get it out of the way right now. I still got this thing pulling vacuum on the AC system. Let me get my funnel in here. And I'm gonna put some coolant in this. And then uh, we'll start it up, see what happens. Okay, she's ready to start. And it may take a couple cranks for this thing to build up some fuel pressure. Uh, but uh, I don't expect anything wrong. We got oil in it, we got coolant. Um, let me crank the engine over, we got the battery hooked up. Let's see what happens. Cranking. That's it. Pretty smooth. She's running good. No noises or anything like that. Uh, let me show you this. So it still has the code set from uh, when it came in. It's a P1326. And yeah, if you see that, the check engine light is still blinking. It's still blinking because it still has the code set. So I need to clear that code. It also has, I believe it has an update available for uh, KSDS logic improvement. And uh, I will go ahead and do that update. And uh, that'll be pretty much it. Let me uh, get the KDS hooked up. Let this thing run a while and I'm gonna turn the heater on just so, just to make sure that we're getting uh, air circulating through the heater core and everything, uh, the heater hoses and stuff like that. And then I'll get you back and uh, we'll see how she's running. Okay, everything's put together. And we just need to take her out on the road and see how she performs. I, I found out it did not have an update. Starts right up. No uh, check engine light. I went ahead and I cleared that code. So, um, Everything is good so far. Goes right into gear. It's running good. So let's take her out on the road. See how she performs.
Okay, guys, that's uh, going to do it for this one. Um, leave a comment below. To let me know what you think. Um, we drove this vehicle in this morning. It was knocking like crazy, and now it runs perfectly fine. Uh, I'm going to... Um, got it on, in the shop right now. I'm going to put it on the lift, check and uh, make sure that there are no any le no leaks or anything like that. And um, other than that, uh, it's good to go. I got to uh, put the the engine core back in the box. I got a lot of paperwork to do to get this thing done, uh, actually. But uh, I'm just going to check it over, make sure everything's good, and um, that's it. So that is uh, engine replacement under uh, uh, what is it PI uh, 1802YZ um, warranty extension and uh, that's how we do it it's a long block just like that and uh, of course like I said I got a bunch of paperwork to uh, get through before everything can be finalized but the engine is in and it is running and it is running good so um, let me know what you think and uh, as always uh, don't forget to like and subscribe I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you, and I will see you in the next one.